And we're ready for Hanky. <laughs> so let's switch it over. Not the speed run. <laughs> speed police is calling. <laughs> Oh, okay. Ooh, hello there. All right. Yeah, okay, okay. So now we can start. <laughs> False alarm before. So three, two, one, go. All right, first things first, you might be wondering why am I using a save file and not just starting from a new game? Basically, in the community, we decided to use a pre-made save file because otherwise you will have a cutscene at the start which takes six minutes where nothing is happening. Whoa, hello there. Also, I forgot to set up something. Don't mind, don't mind it. <laughs> uh, where is it? Totally not turning on cheats. <laughs> totally not. Uh, do -do -do -do. Uh, the feel of you is uh, very, very high in this game, right? Or very low in this game right now. I think it's in video? No, I was there. More on me. There it is. Feel of you. Okay, perfect. Ah, much, much better. All right. Never mind those. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, we start from a pre made save because this allows us to skip that six minute cutscene at the start. Otherwise, we would need to watch it over and over again if we want to reset. So there's no point to it. So we said like, all right, there's no input, nothing happening. So we start from the save file. And the first thing is coming up soonish. So this is kind of like the prologue level where it kind of explains you everything, like how does the game work? How do you use certain abilities or items? So first of all, we take the fire extinguisher, throw it over, then we go to the wall and throw it against ourselves. Hi Barrett, and also there's no wall here. So this is basically one of the tricks we will see very often during the run, which is a so-called clip. And in this case, it's the fire extinguisher clip. Later on, we're going to do something similar with boxes, but you will find out soon. Also, this is cactus skip. Basically, you don't need to use the stairs because you can just jump on the cactus and the cactus allows you to, bam, uh, <laughs> to boost yourself up. Also, if you're wondering why am I going this way, this is a bit of a newer strat. So first of all, I'm going to throw this box over. And if you've seen older runs, you might be wondering like, hey, Heinke, normally you go over the sh air shaft in the top of that part. Like, why are you not going there? Basically, we found a more consistent strat for this clip before we tried to use the fire extinguisher again. And it, it is very hard to do it. And every time you don't get it, you lose 10 seconds. So we found a safer setup, which is using this box by doing the same trick. But if you fail like me, you just have to wait anyway. So you lose more time, but it's not a big deal since the door is opening anyways. And while the door is opening, we just run past the guards. All right, so story-wise, excuse me. All right, story-wise, we lose our arms or, and our legs because we are a bad guard. And now we become, we become a cyborg, oh my god. Robocop 2.0, Robo 2 yeah, <laughs> basically. Because of that, we get back into our job of being a bodyguard, or more, yeah, well, a bad bodyguard before at least. And now we get to our next task six months later, where it said like, hey, you have to go to Seraph Manufactory because there is a hostage, hostage situation. We've got a situation. A break in our Milwaukee also, factory. first of all, I'm going to open the doors because later on I need to go through there. But I first, I have Richard to talk first. with Pritchard. With and what you might have realized I'm doing like the entire first time, like, why are you jumping the entire time? The reason I jump is basically, you see in the top left that I have like a stamina bar. And every time it re before it reaches zero, I jump. So I keep the velocity of my running speed and it, my stamina regenerates in mid-air. Thanks to that, I can just infinitely sprint at the fastest speed. Normally, this doesn't save that much time because if you would just kind of like stutter run. But thanks to that, if you do it through the entire run, you save 10 seconds, which is not too bad. It's not much, but it adds to, to the run if you do one mistake, for example. Also, normally we would run the game in French. Now we have it in English, it's not a big deal. But if you run it in French, the French version is like 12 seconds faster compared to the English version. But it's pff, not a big deal. Also, we hear Adam's awesome voice. Lucky for you, I'm gonna 
if you go 12 seconds over estimate, I'm going to laugh at you. <laughs> wow. Get, getting made fun of. <laughs> also, if there are donations, you can read them out right now. Uh, sadly, I don't have any donations, but I do want to plug the upcoming few incentives. We've got the Super Mario Galaxy 2 two-player, one-controller level that is currently at 79 euros out of 250. Uh, so if you want to see two uh, players go crazy with a Wiimote, uh, do donate for that. Um, there's also a Donut County run, apparently. I didn't know that. Uh, show off Window Percent, which is 150 euros. It sounds really silly. So I would actually like to watch that. So do donate for these awesome uh, donation incentive incentives. And, uh, of course, all of those donations will be going to the Dutch Cancer Society. All right. So what we just had is, like, where we literally can choose our first weapon. It is either non-lethal or lethal and it can be chosen to be a short weapon or a long-range weapon. So in our case we take the revolver, so a lethal weapon uh, with short range. And also what you just saw m was me doing a box clip. Thanks to that box clip it has two effects. First of all we don't need to run around the house. And the second is that all the guards which are supposed to be here are vanished. <gasps> Magic tricks in a speedrun. Who, who would have think thought about that? So because we skip a trigger to actually start them spawning, they never spawn and we can just run through. It has another side effect. It allows us to get a ghost bonus, which adds us 500 XP points. And it's pretty, pretty nice, especially later on. So now we are in Seraph Manufactory. Nothing very door, big happening. Also, hacking skills, 1337, uh-huh. And once again, I'm on it. Like, this is another box clip. Normally, you can wait for this door to open, but nah, we're speedrunners. We want to go fast. So we use that box there, which is lying conveniently, and it if you get it correctly, you save like six to seven seconds for not waiting for the animation. Also, for this entire section, uh, 1337 is our code. So it's really handy. All right. You're not supposed to be here. Well, he realized very quickly. But we don't really care, so we just pass by, bye-bye, and need to go through here. So this is a practice kit. There is a trick you can do. Normally we don't do it in runs, but it's very interesting. Also, we just tank the damage, not a problem, 11 health, easy. So you can do practice kits if you really want to, but it's in the run it's not necessary. It can be helpful for other missions, though. Or if you want to play casually and you want to go for like, I want to get every augmentation. Don't touch them. All right. We'll so this was a scene where the hacker was basically trying to get into our system, but he killed himself before because the overseer, who is like his boss, saw it, and he doesn't want that information is leaking. And now, right now, I'm taking out the revolver. You might be wondering why am I doing it, but you will see see it soonish. So for now, we do more stealth action. Oh no, I got seen. Very stealthy. <laughs> but wait, this is like where the stealth... So you see, normally the, in the minimap, maybe if you paid attention, there are three guards. Because they saw me upstairs, they just ignore that I'm running next to them. And they're like, hmm, he must be still upstairs. And they just pass by you. Also, okay, let's see if this works. So this is a trick, which is a quick save, quick load into a cutscene. Let's see if it worked. It worked. A hey, happy birthday. Adam, what's happening? What's your situation? Adam. Oops. Uh, I totally failed because my audio cue is in French. Never mind. We just have to wait here. So how it works is normally, if you open that door, it you you saw that there's a trigger happening and and a script will start playing. In that script, the guy will talk with you and you have to do mission mission. Bleh. Mission choices, but we don't want to do those mis mission choices. Jesus Christ, English is hard. So what we do is we quick save while that cutscene is getting skipped and we load. This the script gets not activated or it doesn't get played. So we are in the cutscene or more like in the level, and we can just shoot him to co continue the next part. And also because of that trick, if we kill him and we go through the door quickly or we use the box to throw it at the police officer, at a certain time you can skip the info links. Normally this is not possible, so you have to wait for the entire dialogue like what I had to do because I failed completely. But if you do it probably you skip two 
yeah, Infolinks, which allows you to leave the mission immediately, which is very handy. Also, first we need to talk with Pritchard. Done. All right. And now we need to talk with our boss. So what we do here is just like go through the lower levels because that is like faster to go to the next area of the uh, elevator and also we need to leave the building afterwards. So conveniently, if you take the first level elevator or the second level elevator, 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 you will spawn there again once you use it. So in our case, we want to go back to the first level. So this makes it very easy. Also, now we need to talk with our boss. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, done. So this is how you talk with your boss. Remember that. Very helpful. Skips very, a lot of dialogues. And now we do go down again. So yeah, there are a lot of elevator scenes where we literally have to wait. So donation time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> we would like to thank uh, the ESA, the ESA, wow, ESA <laughs> for sponsoring the event and allowing us to stream on their channel. You guys are absolutely awesome. You can consider using your free monthly Twitch subscription right here on this channel, and you will get access to both the ESA and the BSG emotes, and you this get to support free. both of the events, which are both freaking awesome. I'm on it. All right. So, story-wise, this was the granny from your girlfriend, who is like, basically like, hui, 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 my daughter is dead, hui, 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 and she's asking you to do a mission. Um, <laughs> so, so what we do, we accept and say like, yeah, we take a look and f figure out what happened with your daughter, but we actually never do that. And we just do it so she shuts up. <laughs> so she says like, okay, we'll do it, and like, just leaves. And we never see her again. <laughs> Speed runs. <laughs> All right, so this is now limb clinic. So we do like quick shopping. All right, done. And now we're going to get two augmentations. We're running augmentation because fast. We this allows us basically to run a bit faster, not very much, and to jump very high. The jumping is a lot. Uh, is allowing us to do certain skips later on, and also it makes it a bit. Nicer to have this downtime when I'm jumping so that I get more stamina. And now we're on the way to the police station. But before, I need to get some good luck from the from a dancer. Alright. I've got my good luck charm, and now we can get going. Oh man, Eliza, this is so hot. You're crazy. Also, Hmm, what am I doing with a revolver out when I'm going to the police station? I don't think that is an ideal strat. But it will be fine, we'll be fine. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> Nothing happened. Nobody saw anything. <laughs> Alright, and now we are entering the police station, but nobody cared. Nobody heard anything. Oops, but people heard that. It's fine. We're going out of bounds. Nobody will see us. So. The reason we shoot that guy is he wants to talk with us. I don't want to talk with him, so I'm shooting him. <laughs> it's because it's faster. Also, side effect, because we shoot that guard up there, uh, the, the doctor gets spooked. Normally, I would shoot the doctor otherwise. What? Okay. <laughs> All right, that, was, um, that is not supposed to happen, but they killed me rather quickly. <clears throat> Oh, it's fine, because there's an autosave. Uh, but na yeah, now we need to leave the station. And as you can see, we triggered the, uh, we triggered the entire police station because we, we shot the guard and everyone here does. The, normally, this wouldn't be an issue because the, guard, the guards will think we are still upstairs. But because the guard downstairs shot us, he activated and triggered all of the... Jesus Christ, uh, he triggered all of the police officers upstairs. And now, because they know we are downstairs, they're moving to the stairs, which is pretty bad right now. But we'll be fine. No, don't bring it here. Frank's not finished running his diagnostic. And I don't want to risk connecting any tech to our networks until it's done. <laughs> Shotgun guy doesn't like me, all right. Well, this is a bit of a problem, maybe? <laughs> Don't bring it here. Frank's not All right. running his diagnostic, and I don't want to risk connecting any tech to our networks until it's done. All right, this is a bit of a problem, but I have an idea. How about we just let them lure to our? <laughs> no, don't bring it here. 
Uh, we will try to lure them over. So I'm just going to punch this guy. Especially if the tech is military. So what do you want me to do? Take the hop to your apartment. I'll have Frank contact All right. There. Just making sure that shotgun guy is dead. All right. This is fine. This is fine. <laughs> All right. Whew. Well, normally this never really happens during a run. Or if this happens, like, it's very rare. But that was really unfortunate. But it's not too bad. As I said, I just had to punch two police officers. Which, in addition, gave me extra experience points. So all is good. All is good. A detective Alexander. Jenny. And now we go back to our own apartment. She said she could use some help if you could make your way over to Grand River Road. And might I just add, as wonderful as it is to have you back right. at the office... Alright. Also, 420, this is the apartment service. Jensen lives in. Just want to mention it. <laughs> and we have another elevator. Because, so, you're wondering, like, hey, why is there so... Why are there so many elevators in this game? So basically, how it's structured so that you don't have so many loading times are that the elevator is the trigger to load the next area. So if you go through this, the upper level gets loaded and the lower level gets deloaded. Thanks to that, you save resources and you can have faster loading times, which is a, a pretty smart technique in... Excuse me, my mouse button didn't work for some reason. Uh, which is a very smart way to do in game development and it's very common to use. And thanks to that, you can stay in one area basically with different loadings without taking too much memory. So that's mostly the reason. We will later abuse that, so it doesn't matter if there are a lot of elevators or not, but just for your information. And yeah, now we go into the Giro uh, Ballers area, which is a gangster area. And if everything works, you will see very, very stealthy action going on. So let's see if that works. If not, then it will be like the police station. Hopefully not, but we will see. So first of all, there are two guards. Like, okay, very stealthy. They didn't see that we entered their base. So first first stealth mission started. Jensen. <coughs> How can I help you, Francis? And now we do a lot of AI manipulation. So if you look the at the minimap, I'm making sure that they difference. look at the different location, which we got. And now the, that guy, for example, he turns to the right, even though we run to the left. Here the same, we jump on the container so that they hear us on the container and turn away. <coughs> this AI manipulation allows us to just pass by and... Yeah, we sneaked into their base without them knowing. Yeah. No, what am I doing? This is the wrong part. <laughs> Oops. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, so... Yeah, it's not too bad. Luckily, I saved here. RNG manipulation, right? <laughs> RNG manipulation, exactly. So... Because of that, we're now in their base and they don't hear us. And now we can do something which is called the grenade boost. So first of all, we throw over yeah, this canister, put it here, jump on it. I got seen, so that's kind of bad. But it's fine, we got the boost. Whee! And ta-da, we're upstairs. So how this works is normally <coughs> if you jump, you, you can't apply any forces to yourself. However, because the, the barrel is going up and we're jumping the moment the barrel goes up, the force from the barrel gets applied to Jensen's body. And because of that, we can boost ourselves up here, skipping the entire ladder part and going through the Dero Bola section. Also, because this is like a cutscene combined with it, it saves 40 seconds. Since while I have to wait for Malik to arrive, I can just basically pick up those mines, which I need later on. So right now she's landing and I can just talk here and skip to the next area. Also... Jensen, your limo has arrived. Om nom nom, my own gun! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Broken animations are the best part of this game. Because we are moving so quickly, the arms don't know what to do. Because the animation has a certain keyframes and it just moves into his mouth. It's pretty good. <clears throat> also, you have time for donations right now. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, I have a 5 euro donation from Punmeister version 2.0 saying, why was the android itchy? The android what? Why was the android itchy? Oh god, I don't know. Uh, Robotix. Uh, and I thought I do bad jokes, but alright. I'm going in. Also, I didn't swear, it was Malik who was swearing. Ban her. Uh, anyways, <laughs> so <laughs> so what we're doing, right? <laughs> so, 
So what we're doing right now is <clears throat> we go there to get this box and we go back to the start of the level. But Heinke, going to the start of the level is not how you play this level. Wrong, you're wrong, because we're going to use this box to go backwards through the level. So all I have to do is throw the box, go through this wall, and I'm at the end of the level. What? Yeah, basically the developers, or basically the game designers of this level, thought it was a cool idea to put the start and the end of the level at the same kind of like part. So we're going to abuse that. Also, this is the slowest ass clip I'm doing in ages, but it's okay, it works. Three hours later, okay. So, so this, uh, it didn't work. So what I'm going to do here is, normally you would die from fall damage, even though you're the biggest, badass, uh, augmented guy, you still die from fall damage. So what you do, or how you can prevent fall damage, is by using the Icarus landing system. Also, this is a boss fight. <laughs> okay, boss fight is over. Back to explaining the previous glitch. <laughs> so how it works is, before we drop to the ground and would die, we equip the Icarus landing system. If you do it perfectly before the ground, the Icarus landing system won't trigger and it allows us to just skip the entire landing animation. Sadly, I was doing it a bit earlier, but I do it for safety as well, otherwise we would need to do the entire section again. And it only loses 3 seconds thanks to anima for, the, for the animation. So it's, it's okay, don't worry, don't worry. And because of that, since we go backwards, backwards through the level, the boss doesn't spawn because the trigger is on the other side of the, of the level. So as you have yeah. seen, I just plant. Oops. This is a. Uh, don't worry. He's a drug dealer. I'm just going to steal his equipment, which I could normally buy. Don't don't worry about it. I need his grenades, so I just took him from him. <clears throat> so, because the boss only spawns when we uh, go through the main entrance, we can go through the back entrance, put the mines there. He spawns and dies immediately. Thanks to that, this is one of the easiest boss fights. Back then, when we were playing this game on hard, you need five explosions. On the easy difficult, you need only three explosions. So thanks to that, it makes it faster. But why do you play on easy? Well, first of all, it's faster, and second of all, we wouldn't be able to do all the grenade boosts we, you just saw, because if you get damage from the grenades, normally it would kill you instantly if you're close by, unless you have uh, protection uh, augmentation or enough health. But on easy, it doesn't kill you immediately. So if you use a hippo stim, which allows you to have temporarily more HP, you can survive it. And that's what we're going to use. Especially later. Also, once again, our boss wants to talk with us. Oh, best conversation ever. All right, and now we're going to leave. Once again, Pritchard wants to talk with us, so we're going to go over to him. And we have another elevator scene. I, told you I, li I literally should first. prepare some elevator music for those scenes because they happen so often. Make your own music, yeah. <laughs> Make it snappy. <clears throat> okay, talking with Pritchard. Perfect. And back to the helipad. Now we're going to go to the Hong Kong part. Hong Kong? Uh, from Human Revolution, which is Hangsha. So, if you know the Deus Ex games, basically all of the time you will be, or most of the time, you will be in one of the Chinese-speaking countries. <coughs> in Deus Ex 1, it's Hong Kong, here it's Hangsha, and now we're going to start here. So, if there are donations, go for it. We do not have any donations. But oh well. we are raising money for the Dutch Cancer <laughs> Society, which is a nationwide organization committed to fight cancer while aiming for a more cure and a higher quality of life for those already battling the disease. They also uh, fund a lot of research, so um, your money, uh, if you're not in the Netherlands, your money will still go to fight cancer. So, and I think he, Hanky just made a boo-boo. <laughs> Uh, basically, don't mind me, I was just knocking out an innocent, so <laughs> all good, all good. Okay, okay. All right, once again, I'm taking a box with me, which could lead to two possibilities, which is I'm just going to throw it around, which I'm already doing, and the second is going to clip through here. So how Hang Sha works normally, there's a lot of side missions you need to go and do based story-based missions like find out who's a hacker, figure out the underground, get a, get a access to the subway which is closed, but nah, we don't care. We just go through here and just use the subway because conveniently you can still use it even when the doors are closed. Nice. Malik. 
And now we're in Taeyong Medical. So once again, this is going to be a very, very stealthy action. So all I need is my stealthy revolver. <laughs> and also some hacking. Also, <laughs> once again, like with old lady, this guy wants that we help him, so we just accept it. Because it's the faster dialogue option, but we just leave him there. We we're very rude. And also, once again, very stealthy. Oh no. But thanks. So normally this guard will be hostile because we enter this area where we're not allowed to be. But if we shoot him before he can do any shots, all the AI in this room will be not hostile. So we can just run through and normally jump over the laser or like me, jump through the laser. <laughs> Which is not what I wanted to do, but it's fine. Also, hello there. Bye bye. And just skip this area. All right. So once again, very stealthy Jensen. No problem at all. And while we're here, I'm going to use the Hippo Stim, which allows me to put myself at 150 HP, and we're going to do something similar to the Barrel Boost we just saw before. Only this time we're going to do it and use it with a fire extinguisher and a mine instead of a grenade. But first of all, we need to get there, so all we need to do right now is just a bit of parkour, but that's why we got the jumping anime or jumping augmentation, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to go up here. The other option to do this is literally just stack objects on each other and use them as ladder. And if you never played this game, the, the game basically builds on giving you different possibilities and different playthroughs. So you either can go full max on weapons, or if you want to play more stealthy, you can go full on stealth action by using augmentations or just knocking people out or just killing everyone on your way. You have different play styles and you can either go as well for hacking, ammunition, body armor, and so on and so on. So, thanks to that you have different versions how to play through it, and we obviously use the one which is making everything go faster. Okay, first of all we set up this thing, close the elevator, jump up here, and now we do spooky, spooky tricks. Ooh, the elevator is out of bounds, magic. And now we get ourselves out of bounds by using the typhoon glitch, Wee! goes like this. So how it works, the Typhoon pushes you backwards and upwards for whatever reason. And thanks to that, we can go out of bounds when we're staying close to a wall. Uh, excuse me? Where's my extinguisher? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, uh, I guess it disappeared. <laughs> it's fine, I saved, so we can just... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we can just <clears throat> do it again. All right, there you go. Now it's there with me. Oh, thank you, thank you. So now we do a certain setup. We put it here, put a mine there, super safe. And I failed. Rip. <laughs> so once again, like with a barrel boost, we boost ourselves up by jumping in the right time when the explosion would happen. Like this, bam, also nice teeth. And bye bye. Thanks to this, we skip like two floors and like 20 seconds also a cutscene. And now we have, like, once again, an elevator scene. But, <clears throat> yeah, so first things first, like, Hanky, you're talking too much and do, don't explain everything one by one. Calm down, we're getting back to it. First of all, Typhoon. As I said, pushes you backwards and upwards. And normally, there's a check. If you're too close to a wall, it pushes you away. But if you press backwards, you stay next to the wall. So you can go out of bounds. Second is, how do I get the fire extinguisher out of bounds? If you move a fire extinguisher or your mouse cursor quickly enough while you take an item, it is having no collider for a couple of frames. And we abuse that to get it out of bounds. Thanks to that, we can use the fire extinguisher later on and boost ourselves up. All right, calm down, I explained it. Now next part, <coughs> which is literally another elevator, so don't worry. Also, once again, more stealth action. First of all, I'm going to prepare my revolver. Because <laughs> we're going to do this stealthily. <laughs> best, best special agent. Whoops. Agent 47 would be proud. <laughs> all right. So first of all, they're searching for us. So I'm going to shoot that they know I'm here. Now they're going to shoot at me and I'm going to throw a concussion grenade. So everyone is stunned. And because everyone is stunned, I can just go through. Because everyone is getting stunned while I'm going to the elevator, I get the ghost bonus. Because it's so stealthy. 
<laughs> it's just, it's, <laughs> this is how it works. Also, in my casual playthrough, this really annoyed me. There are two bots, and you're supposed to kill them before you can enter to the next area. What you can do is just throw two EMP grenades like this, and boom, done. We're going to die, and you can just leave the area. If you played it casually and you didn't know that, now you know. It makes things easier. Or if you have hacking, you can just basically hack the hack the bots, and then they're saying like, "Okay, we're not here." Jensen, time to hightail it back to Detroit. Get in. We're not going All right. to Detroit. And while what? while here, I'm just going to steal some ammo. I need that for later for. Hmm, free explosives. What could I do with that? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Anyways, we're getting to my favorite part, which is Panchea, which is a very broken level. So first of all, let us keep half of the level by going out of bounds. So we jump on this container, Jensen, and then we jump out of bounds. Ta-da! So how it works, or trouble. thanks to it's the container having a bit of pixels outside, we can just jump on it. Now we're dropping through half of the level at the funicular, which is another big-ass elevator. And now the fun part begins. So once I start the button for this, we have to normally wait two minutes before we can go to the next area. But as you have seen before, you can clip through up through walls. And this was a perfect funicular. I clip through the, through the door, start the elevator and go downstairs. And while now this is where it becomes hilarious. One, once I'm at the boss, he will say, hey, your elevator is where you can use it now, but we're already starting the boss fight. And yeah, now we have a lot of downtime because this elevator takes like a minute, so... Donation time! <laughs> Heck yeah! Uh, I've got a 5 euro donation saying, yo. Yo. <laughs> and another 5 euro donation from Triple X Gamer saying, can't donate dur uh, can't not donate during a Heinke run. That man has too much energy, but that's why his runs are the best. Loving the marathon and I'm loving your donation. Uh, that al also puts uh, the uh, Super Mario uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2 two-player one controller uh, incentive at 161 euros left. So do donut uh, do do <laughs> do donate for that. That is harder to say than you think, honestly. Like wow, do donate for that if you want to see uh, two nerds go ham. All right. We're almost at the last floor, and if I paid attention, all right, count with me, 25, 26, 28, all right, you can count. So basically the developers forgot to put 27 there. So yeah, there's not 27 floor. <laughs> Just wanted to mention that. It's nothing big, but always hilarious. Okay, once again, very stealthy. Now we jump over the laser. So this guy is a bit scary. He has, once again, a shotgun, ouch, but it's fine. I have a box with me, so what could it be? Bye bye. And now we go to the boss room. Also, code is 8021. And. Ah, yeah, there you go. Your ride is there. Hey, your elevator is there. Thank you, but I'm fighting the boss. Leave me alone. Alright, boss fight, very hard. Throw free grenades. Okay, bye. Bye, Rihanna. I mean, Yelena. <laughs> And so once again, before this is like a trigger zone where the helipad will start coming over. And because we need to wait, I'm going to activate the trigger. And while the trigger or while the animation is playing, I'm just going to farm a lot of stuff here, which is conveniently at every boss room. So first of all, I'm getting more revolver ammo because revolver ammo is very, very important for the run, especially just to be very stealthy and also to destroy certain objects. Then I get more candy, because what I didn't tell you, Jensen? the battery refill by and using candy, and I'm not taking normal candy bars, but candy jars. So we have like those huge go? ass bottles, yeah, and he's just chugging out. everything in, so he can have more batteries, and the batteries allows us to do the augmentations. <laughs> Don't worry about that. All right, now back to Detroit 2. So how this level is basically built up is, we were in Detroit 1 before, so now it loads Detroit 2 through. Basically, it's the same level in the same area. Only difference is that different 
objects or missions are available. And also, I'm going to show you the Fire Extinguisher Express. So first of all, you just go to this wall. Excuse me. Throw the Fire Extinguisher hard enough against yourself to go out of bounds. Take the Extinguisher out of bounds and then you just stand on it. Fire Extinguisher Express. Because it's faster than a normal elevator. <laughs> also, how does it work? Normally, if you want to reduce or make sure that you don't get any fall damage, you can stand on an object while it drops. And because you are standing on an object, the collider or the, the ray trace, which is checking how far you're away from the ground, is always at one or zero. So it says, okay, no fall damage is happening. And because of that, you never get fall damage. Also, basketball time. Uh, that was horrible. I wanted to dunk it, and I thought I did it, but backwards, so no achievement for me, but it's okay. Either way, we're going to take this box with us, because, well, once again, as previously, normally you have to do a certain mission, you have to get through certain dialogues and triggers, meet certain criteria, but we can as well just go through this zone, which is completely blocked by clipping out of bounds, like this. And ta-da! We're going to enter the Seraph Manufactory. Normally, this area is not supposed to be entered. Like, you can't be here. But if you clip through, you can use the door. And how it works is, you normally teleport into this area. And the game thinks you teleported by doing the previous mission, and it just spawns you at the next hey, slot, so that the game doesn't glitch out. Because of that, we can completely sequence break the entire Taggart conversation and going to the conference room. Pretty, pretty good. Hmm? I'm missing something in the background. Hmm? <laughs> I see. Fair enough, fair enough. Just ghost tech in the background, don't mind. Don't worry about it, chat. Also, once again, now we know our. So we're supposed to talk with our boss, but our boss is not at home, so we're going to leave again and we're going to hang Sha. Also, what I'm going to do now is because we're people were complaining that I'm playing on easy, so we're going to switch it on give me a challenge. Ooh, but it's not hard because the hardest difficulty is called give me Deus Ex. Or later on, I never asked for this, but I think I never asked for this is only in Mankind Divided, if I remember correctly. In any case, it's now harder, but the, re the reason we make it harder is sad, so... <laughs> Remember this person. Awesome. She's great, okay? Remember it. And once again, we get into Hangsha. And as previously with Detroit 1 and 2, we get from Hangsha 1 to Hangsha 2. So certain missions now activate and others are gone. Certain areas are unlocked and others are not available now. But yeah, what happens is an ambush! Oh my god, no! They knew that we're coming! And now we're just going to be... Oh my god, this is very loud for me. Alright. Okay, so we get the stealth augmentation because now they literally can't see us. And what I just did is by jumping on the button at a certain, air, uh, certain timing, the cutscene will not trigger and we won't see Malik get executed. However, she gets still killed, but later on, so we can just immediately go through the door while she dies, so... Malik! <laughs> and also, the reason... Why do F... Yeah, press F. Malik, best pilot girl. She's dying now, yeah. So, also the reason why we step up the difficulty is she receives more damage, and we want that, so she dies faster, so we can just go through this door. So Make she dies for now. speed. For Rita. Give him hell for me. Never gonna forget your sacrifice. All right, back to the fast. Or back to donations? Uh, I do have a donation. Hey! I've got a 10 euro donation from Monique saying, my mom wants to donate but didn't know how, so I'm doing it for her. Smiley face. Smiley face. I made this. <laughs> I don't think you made that donation, did you? I made this. <laughs> Smiley face. We've all had them. So far, I can't determine why. 
You heading to a clinic? I'm running a few more tests. Also, another advantage of ha being able to turn yourself no invisible is back. that you people don't talk with you way. because they can't see you. Up to you. Brain move. Like, big brain move. Nobody can talk with you if, you they, if they can't see you. And there are like a couple of people who want to talk with you. So what we do normally is like either we just shoot them so they don't talk with us, or later on we turn invisible so they don't see us. Mr. Jensen, Hugh Darrow here. Also, because intrusion, if you go fast here, his info link just cuts out. So we never see, uh, hear him talk the rest of the uh, run, which is pretty convenient. Also, once again, we go to the sewers because there's like um, the gangster, which you never saw, but with whom we did basically a deal and who let us figure out where the hacker is. But as I said, we, we never saw that in the speedrun. We only know that because we know lore. Anyways, so first of all, put that jar of candy into Jensen so I can use the batteries to turn invisible all the time. So right now, 100% stealth. They don't even know that I'm passing by or they hear me, but it doesn't matter because now they are my friends. So, also he has a laser gun. I steal it from him because I like lasers. And oh no, glitches! What is happening? Also, it happened before, but I completely ignored it, so don't mind me. So, story-wise, all people who are augmented have now, like, those glitches happening. But their system is not working. And you, as a player, can decide. You can either go to the limb clinic or not. Also, oh no, I'm going full speed forward. What can I do? Deja vu! Okay, sideway drifting. Luckily, I got the drifting augmentation of Jensen. Nice, all right. So here now we're at the harbor. And what we need to do is we need to sneak a bomb into the harbor and then send ourselves away, what we're, which we are literally going to do now. So we are putting ourselves like, we wrap ourselves in a nice container and then we just you leave this area without anyone know anything. Tong, how did you get this frequency? Ancient shiny secret. Now All right. listen, you're going to plant that package in Administrator Wang's office. Put it on the bastard's desk and Also, if you were wondering, like, how do you know every code? So the codes are prefixed, so they're always for every run the same. And if you just memorize them, you can just be a super hardcore hacker and just go through. Literally just press random buttons and be done. Only said it if I'm ready to go. Okay. Bomb is planted and now we leave. Going to Singapore, which is another broken level, thankfully. Are there any non-broken levels in this game? No. <laughs> Something's wrong, Jensen. So first of all, once again, there's a box. I'll take the box. I like box. Throw it against myself, go out of bound, or more like on the other side. Eat another jar of candy, or not, or... I've got more important I am so stealthy they didn't even me. see me, excuse me? Alright, new strat I guess. Waste. Well, it doesn't really matter, but okay. So now I'm throwing it over here. I need, once again, this box. But I need to be careful. If that little bot there sees me, he will follow me and interrupt me from doing glitches. And I want to do glitches. So this is going to be a very hard boss because, well, we're going to completely skip him. So first of all, we go out of bounds once again. Then we need to hit the corner on the other side because if this triggers the lower area to render. And now we're going to run invisibly through this area. First of all, always forward. Just go forward, follow me, forward, forward, forward. Okay, we hit the wall, turn to the left and go to this hill all the way. Don't mind this. Okay, then go left and right, open the door. Congratulations, you skipped the boss fight. And if you're like, excuse me, what did you just do? So what happens is I hit the trigger on the other side, which allows me to load the lower level or the colliders. The, normally the textures would load if I use the elevator and then a boss fight would happen. But because I don't use the elevator and I don't use the trigger, it never loads. So the boss fight does not happen, but the colliders are there. And because I know the level layout, I can just literally abuse it and go to the end of the level or of at the end where the door is, which triggers a cutscene, and that loads the next area, which is thankfully here, and we never have to fight the boss or even I'm care about him. Very, very convenient. Stop you. you and I aren't done with this, Megan. I know how it looks, 
but you have to stop the broadcast. Also, plot twist, Megan is alive! terrifying hallucinations. You mean it's true that people are saying? That story, but... And it's up to you to stop it. Use the Leo shuttle. It will take you to Panchea. Good luck, All right. So now we're stealing a rocket, and we need to wait, so... If you wanna say anything, now's your chance. Last chance. My last chance. <gasps> last chance. <gasps> By donating to the charity, uh, you'll be eligible for one of the amazing prizes sponsored by NintendoCore.org. Any donation will get you a chance to win one of the prizes of the day, uh, and will also give you three times bigger chance to win the grand prize. For more information <laughs> about the grand prize, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Use the. <laughs> use the <laughs> Wow, I can't even finish it. <laughs> Use the, the, the command grand prize. Back to you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, all right, this is the last level, which is Panchea. And... This is going to be very fast, so here we're going to use a couple of glitches together and you probably might be wondering like, Hanky, why did you take the laser gun? Literally no reason, I just like lasers. No, basically firing your laser is so overpowered that later on the end boss will be a joke because Fun fact, the laser can go through walls and glass and any obstacles, so it goes out of bounds and hits everything on the way, which is very convenient and we're going to abuse that. But for now, I'm using the revolver to destroy this window and take this box again. So once again, I'm going to clip through this door, or try so at least. But this door doesn't allow you to clip through properly, so I'm going to clip myself through for the first half, and then I'm using the typhoon glitch to push myself up, well, out of bounds or on the other side, or not at all, nice. And because of that, I hit the trigger which loads the next area, I skip a dialogue which takes normally three minutes, and I can just go ultimately fast. Alright, this looks much better. Also nice slow-mo talk, yeah, this looks perfect. Don't mind his arm going through the door, this is fine, he's okay. Also his head looking through, there you go. So now we skip the, the entire dialogue and as mentioned before, there are those glitches which happen. All augmented people are now zombies, oh my god! So basically they became crazy. So, and obviously, because of plot armor, Jensen can't be affected. So normally this is explained why it doesn't affect him, but I think it's just hilarious to say he's, he's the chosen one. And everyone else is not. So everyone is crazy, and the crazies are actually bad, because for some reason, they can slow you down now. So if they hit you, you're, you can't run and they can literally kill you instantly. So they're pretty overpowered and it's worse than the police guys having the, the shotgun. If they see you. So at this area, fun fact, this is called Star Wars Bridge, which we found out thanks to Dr. T-Chops looking at the code and finding it in the code. But once again, I'm going to use a... Use a box. Oh no, they hit me. But yeah, this is what I mean. I can't I can't run right now. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. They destroyed the barrel? They can do that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that literally never happened before. <laughs> I'm a bit shocked. All right. The more you know. Anyways, once again, I turn myself invisible. So they shouldn't see me, but because they're crazy, they can see me and they can slow me down. Slowing me down is not good. Excuse me, please leave me alone. All right. All right. Ooh, Jesus Christ. So the fun fact is, like, crazies can, for some reason, not uh, hear you, even though you're invisible. So here we are going to do another elevator skip, but it's going to be a bit differently. So. As I mentioned before, we have Icarus Landing, which cancels every fall damage. So what I'm going to use is the EMP Grenade, which deactivates all my current activated and active and passive augmentations. And I, I use it at a certain time so that I land before the boss and skip the entire thing. Thanks to this, we are now going to fight the end boss. And it's, as I mentioned, it's very hard. So I'm going to shoot her. Okay, she's dead. That's it. That, that is the final boss. This is why I said the laser gun is overpowered, because it can just go through 
protection glass and through walls and she's normally hidden behind protection glass so it takes a while before you can actually damage her but well we completely ignore it also you can make yourself ready for time so once this dialogue is done we will be done so yeah this was human revolution hope you enjoyed it this was uh, we like besides the police station everything went pretty fine i'm okay with that and boom time So yeah. So yeah, but as I said, this was Human Revolution. Hope you enjoyed the run. Hope you had fun. Hope you don't mind me doing really bad jokes. I mean, I'm German. I'm supposed to not do jokes, so don't mind that. But yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining in. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to donate. And if you're interested in running any of the Deus Ex games, call me or write me or anything. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you a postcard. <laughs> nice. Please, uh, please send a bird. <laughs> okay, we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, the Discord is open for everyone. If you're interested, there are tutorials by Yilmir and other runners. We're very open. And yeah, thanks for watching and see ya. Thank you for that funny run. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Anyways, coming up next, we have Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Funky Mode, Any Percent, No Death Abuse by Rikold, RDV vs. The World, and Green Snow Dog. So uh, stay tuned for that uh, while we play some ads.